Hi everyone and welcome back to The Collar Cave where we like to play with art stuff. It is that time of the month again for our scroller box. For those of you that have never heard of scroller box, they are a UK based art subscription box company and you pay them something every month and they send you a surprise box of goodies with a prompt to match so that you can create a piece of artwork with the prompt using only the supplies provided in the box. Another disappointment from them this month with a mix up with supposed shipping dates, they sent out their dispatch email and said that the boxes were on the way and we then received another email a few days later saying that they made a mistake and they hadn't been dispatched that day and it was actually the day after and we should have our boxes on the day that the email was sent which was yesterday and lo and behold mine never came but I now have it in my grasp so let's get to top down view and we can see what is inside. So let's see what we've got. All right, oh I see pastel colors and it looks like paint. Oh, these are pretty cute. So what we have is some feather and leaf designs. Sarina Rina is our featured artist and she is a doodle dreamer for, from St. Petersburg in Russia. So her Instagram is also down here. If you like this, you can check out her other artwork online. Have two more sort of bookmark type sheets here and this feels suspiciously like very good quality watercolor paper. Now, this makes me quite happy because I'm on a bit of a watercolour kick just now. I uh, recently learned to, <laughs> I wouldn't say learn to watercolour, I recently tried it out and uh, did a very funny set of two videos on it. If you want to watch them, I'll link them up in the card and down in the description. So yeah, I'm kind of hoping that this might be watercolour supplies. Come on. Okay, we have, oh, we have a little sticker in one of our designs. How cute is that? I really like that. I'm going to stick that on my sketchbook, I think. Okie dokie, we have a scroller box sticker as well, which has a watercolour -y theme this month as well, which is nice. Uh, usually the standard ones are in these colours here, so that makes a nice change. Every now and then they chuck one of these out here, so if you like that sort of thing. I have a Mawam fruit. Oh, they're so good as well. We'll be getting into that in a minute. Ooh, and we have our list of, ooh, we have our list of supplies, which we'll look at in just a minute. And the scroller challenge is plumage. Okay, so these aren't leaves at all. These are feathers. Good gem. <laughs> Let's see, we have, oh, a Karen Brush Marker Pro and it says on it calligraphy, graphic design and illustration. Let's take a look at this bad boy. Oh, that looks lovely. Look at that, it looks like a really juicy brush tip. I like that. So that's a nice purple colour. And we have another one and this one is in a sort of um, peacock green colour. I like these very much, okay. Oh wow, there's four of them. Brush marker, I don't know what, oh, what is, oh, this is a blender. This is a blender. Okay. So we're gonna use this to squish some colors together, which is probably how our featured artist has got these effects. Now this has a yellow cap on it, but the, uh, the ink inside looks a bit more of an orange tint so we'll swatch these out oh it tells you on it duh gem it's gold gold we have an art line drawn system pigment ink water based water resistant so this is just basically a 0 0.2 fine liner that's pretty fine oh yeah that's pretty fine i do like a very fine fine liner so that is right up my street i'm liking this so far what do we have here? Oh, bog standard. Oh, Karen Dash HB pencil. You can never go wrong with a bog standard HB pencil. It does feel really lightweight and sort of, I don't know, cheap. <gasps> Am I allowed to say that? Feels cheap. Oh my God. I don't know if any of you had these at school. These are the erasers that fit on the end of your pencil. <laughs> my violin teacher when I was a little girl used to have a gajillion of these and he loved them and he used to use it for making like annotations on whatever piece of music we were we were working on and he'd add things in and rub things out uh, and he had he had them in all different colors he was obsessed with them so that's what that reminds me of hmm, my primary school violin teacher nice Karen Dash Fibralo so this might be a fiber tip pen yep Looks like a colour noun pen. Feels really cheap as well, really cheap lid. Two of them, we've got a blue one as well. At least we've got quite a, a sort of array of colours here. I'm quite enjoying this. Oh wow, Spectrum Noir Aqua Tint. Now this looks to me suspiciously like a Wink of Stella or a Wink of Luna brush. 
and it says soft jade so we will need to try that out i'm assuming it'll work on the same principle yep that is us so let's just squish these out of the way okay the karen brush markers super durable and flexible nylon tip dye based color the colors can be mixed directly by contacting the ends of the markers by using the blender pen or wash out with water to create tonal transitions oh that's interesting so not only can we use them together we can use them on their own with each other with the blender or with water now that is exciting so this one is lilac oh that's nice i have a feeling we might have to let these dry yeah they're super smudgy okay note to self be very careful and make sure that you let them dry there is a wee bit of ghosting through to the other side of the page, but it's minimal and that was a pretty dark colour. So I think these are going to be quite useful, these pens. So this colour is lush green and I love the colour green. It's quite dark, but that's quite nice. Right, we'll not smudge that one. And we have the, the supposed gold one. Kind of looks like cadmium yellow to me, but okay, we'll go with that. So let's see what happens then if we do what's suggested and try and mix them together. So we've done, this is kind of the same principle as the uh, chameleon markers where you touch tip to tip and you let gravity do its thing. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna risk it here and I'm gonna put the dark color into the yellow. Oh, I might have ruined this pen. So you can see that it's stained the tip. So let's see what happens now when we try and, oh yeah. I'm wondering, oh dear. I'm wondering how long this will go on for before it goes back to its normal colour. Okay, we're getting there now. And you do have to keep turning the nib. Okay. So maybe not the best for gradients, but you can definitely get some in-between tones from the original dark green. If you look at that, that is the the green in its purest form. So you can actually get different um, different shades along this as well as a kind of ropey gradient. So that's kind of good to know. The tip of that looks really not too bad at all. I have to say the brushes on these seem to be really, really nice. Let's try the blender. So I'll use the purple this time. And I just want to see what it does. Th these are really juicy. There is a lot of ink flow in that. Grab the blender and just see if we can blend out a soft edge. Yeah, that's quite aggressive. I think you might be struggling to get this a smooth, you know, a smooth gradient. But... So you can kind of like blend it out. Just cleaning the tip of this to make sure that... Now that's quite interesting. Now I'm just, I'm gonna go and get some water. All right, so I have here some water and a ceramic palette. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to scribble some of, <laughs> comedy noise. Okay, so I've just scribbled some of that ink into the base of that. Ceramic does work better for this, for MD that's not had a try at it. It, um, it pulls the ink better than plastic does. Even if you use just an old saucer or something, it'll do the same job. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little bit of water in my pipette. Can you tell that I'm a scientist in my day job? And I'm just gonna splodge a tiny little bit in there. So that's like one drop. And I'm just gonna mix it up. And see what we get here. Okay, that's pretty faint. But that is such an attractive shade. So let's see if we can uh, lighten this up a bit. So I've just added a little bit more water. Yeah, so that's actually functioning like a, almost like watercolor, which I suspect is what has been going on here. It's really nice now that the featured artist actually uses the products in the box. For a while there, um, there was a lot of digital art, but it was inspired by the colors or whatever that was in the box. Whereas I think that now the featured artist actually uses similar products to what's actually coming in the scroller boxes. Right, this is really nice. I'm really liking this color. So I'm gonna try some of the other ones. Let's have a go with the purple see what we can do when I'm making this noise my collie pup who is six months is looking up at me 
as if to see where's that coming from <laughs> she's down on the floor beside me okay I'm gonna put a little bit more water in this I think oh that looks so nice yeah you can get some really really delicate shades with this this is lovely let's see if we can go lighter again Yeah, you can get that down to a really delicate wash. I have a feeling that you could uh, you could tank through the, the ink in this pretty quickly just by, you know, getting a bit sort of brush happy like I am here. But that's okay. Now the trick is with stuff like this is better to wait until it's dried. Um, see, that's, that way you'll get a true representation of of what you're actually dealing with. So you can make that a bit stronger. It's still giving you delicate color, but it's just a little bit more to it than the, the very, very palest wash. The last thing I want to do with these pens is to test out how they actually function as pens. We've kind of done everything else, so I'm gonna shift over to the other side here because that's getting a bit, um, bit crowded over there. And let's just see what it's like for line widths. I would be very careful about what type of paper to use these on. As I say, they, they are really juicy, they're really wet. And I think on thinner or cheaper paper, it might cause you a bit of an issue. I would be interested to know if you can get refills for these as well. As I say, I'm not convinced that you wouldn't absolutely hear through the, the contents. It does, it, the barrel is clear so you can see how much ink is in them. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that. But it you, you can physically see it going down, so I suppose that's always something. The brushes on these are lovely. Um, I am a reasonable fan of a good brush tip. And I like the shape of this because you can get really, really fat lines like that, but you can also get super, super thin lines as well. So that is a really, really versatile brush pen. And the fact that you can do all this stuff with it, this is right up my street. I'm really into this. I mean, look at that. You, you can't ask for much more than that from a pen. These are super versatile. Okay, so these have definitely got a thumbs up for me. The blender, I think we'll probably have to play about with a little bit more. Um, but let's try and... I wonder what happens if we do this side by side. Does the blender work when the ink is dry? Oh, that's still smudgy. The answer to that is yes, it tanks through it no problem whatsoever. So that's good to know. But let's see what happens here. How well we can actually... What I tend to find with these blenders is they've usually got some sort of agent that breaks down the pigment, which is obviously how a blender works, but it tends to leave a white ghost line and it's done it here. You can see where, where the colours have crossed over underneath that. Some of the blender has bled out into the pure green colour and it's left this white line. That's something that tends to be a common problem with blenders. I don't know if it's got a proper name, but I notice it a lot. And uh, yeah, it's, it kind of ruins things a bit. I have to apologise for the slight clicking noises that you can hear. It is my dog chewing on a... She has one of these Nyla bones that she's chewing on, but she is a puppy and it's keeping her happy, so I am not complaining and hopefully it won't be too loud and distracting for you guys. So the other thing we've got here is uh, a, an Artline Fine Liner. It feels quite chunky barreled. Um, it's not the daintiest of pens, even though it has a dainty nib. So let's just have a wee go up here and see what we can do with it. It's quite smooth, I like that. Sometimes with these fine liners, when they've got a really small nib on it, they feel really dry and scratchy, but uh, this one feels pretty good. And the, the ink seems to be consistent also, and it's given me some quite nice fine hatching there as well, which again is, is something that I really like to do with fine liners, because a lot of time I don't actually sketch in color, I just like to sketch in black and white, so that's really helpful for shading. So yep, Another fine liner, but this is a good one. It does feel really sturdy. It's got a really sturdy clip on it as well if you're the kind of person that likes to hook things in and, you know, travel about while you're creating. So that's quite good as well. We've got the Karen Dash Fibrillo pens, and I'm interested to see what it says about these as well. Fibre tip colouring pens. 
and okay they are water soluble as well so there's gonna be a lot of water going the water-based ink will not bleed through paper and can be washed out of most modern fabrics well that's good to know as well Ooh, the bright transparent colors will not dry out for days with the cap lift off that's good to know as well so i'm expecting these to behave just like felt tip pens or fiber tip pens yeah kind of reminds me of being at school that's two things that have reminded me of being at school today this is not a nice feeling so we've got blue and a more traditional yellow is what i say so we've actually got quite a nice bank of colors here and i'm just going to grab my brush with some water oh yeah mm -hmm. oh that's lovely as well oh this is great fun today <laughs> i'm enjoying my scroller box people can you tell yeah, if I just zoom in a bit on that, you'll be able to see the yellow a little bit better. But that that just, oh yeah, it just melts away. That's amazing. So that's got a thumbs up as well. I'm just looking to see if it says anything about the art line pen. The one thing we do need to test with the fine liner is how water resistant it really is. Because quite often they say water resistant. And water resistant is a different thing from waterproof. So that's quite a lot of water I've splodged on there and it's not moving. So let's do a bit of scrubbing. That's not really moving. I'm impressed. Okay, so the water resistance is good as well, which is another bonus point. Let's have a look at this uh, Spectrum Noir Aqua Tint. Aqua Tint pen, bright water soluble dye based ink, blah, 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 blended out with water. Dip the nib in water and use like a regular brush for a very light color wash. Great for moving blending colors from other pens. Okay, with these, th this functions in exactly the same way as a a Kuretake Wink of Stella or Wink of Luna brush. So you need to unscrew this first and take the ring off because that's what's sort of protecting it when it's new. And then you just screw this back on like so. Make sure that's down tight and then you can pull the top off. That's a pretty long brush. And if I start squeezing here, eventually we should see some ink paint, whatever you want to call it working its way down into this chamber and there is nothing happening. Now you know what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and then all of a sudden it's just all gonna whoosh through and make a mess everywhere. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Oh, there we go. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Oh. That's quite nice. Um, I don't know if I would really want to be diluting that much more with water, if I'm honest, because it's quite a dainty shade to begin with. Let's dip it in water and see what happens. Yeah, it's just made a really pale wash. Now let's try it with, because it did say it's good for mixing all our other colors. So let's just test that theory out. So let's go like this and see what happens. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's pretty good for blending out other colors. The, the flow of the ink is a little bit inconsistent. It might just be because it's a new pen, but that has like dried out to almost nothing. Now you can see me, I'm doing that and nothing's happening. So let's give it a squeeze. Oh, come on. Yeah, it's a bit slow in the on the uptake. That might improve with time. Sometimes it often does with these types of brushes. I do own quite a few of these. Oh. <laughs> That's exactly what I was talking about earlier. It was going to happen at some point and lo and behold. So I might have to be careful with this. It seems to be a slightly on the temperamental side. All right, last and certainly not least, we have our Karen Dash HB pencil and our end of pencil eraser. So I don't think there'll be anything special about the HB pencil. Uh, no, it basically says it's just a, it's just a pencil. <laughs> so, standard HB fare. I would say that's quite a light HB myself, personally. I really don't like flimsy, cheap feeling things, and this feels cheap. Uh, which is really unusual for Karen Dash, because nearly everything they make is really expensive. <laughs> right, now here comes the true acid test. Get the school eraser out. Oh, look at that bad boy go. Yes. There you go. That has taken out a rather substantial amount of graphite. 
without really pressing that hard. There's a really heavy line that I put down at that corner and it's taking quite a lot of it away. I'm impressed. They're as good as I remember. Yeah, they're good for putting on the end of pencils that used to have erasers and you still try and use the eraser because you're used to doing it. Uh, it's also <laughs> that all that rubbing that I just did, it's hardly dented it at all, which is <laughs> it's quite entertaining. These are bulletproof, these things. The paper that we have here is St Cuthbert's Mill, which are a really, really, really good brand of paper. And it is 300 GSM and it's made with 50% cotton. Acid free uh, optical brighteners to give it a bright white colour and is ideal for botanical watercolour painting as well as charcoal pastels and graphite. Scrawler tip, one side will be smoother than the other, so choose wisely. Well, let's see if we can figure that out. Oh yeah, for sure. I can't show you because it is so bright, uh, but there, one side is quite clearly textured and one side is, it feels like marker paper. So that will be apparent to you if you get a scroller box. Okay, so let's have a quick recap. We have two sheets of this 300 GSM paper, which is absolutely delightful. Our Helix Old School Eraser and Karen Dash HB Pencil, so that's going to be good for sketching. We have our Sweet and our rather funky scroller box sticker, as well as our art from our featured artist, our list of supplies and the scroller challenge prompt for this month, which is plumage. We have two Canon Dash felt tip pens that are water soluble. The Artline 0.2 Fine Liner, which is water resistant and is considerably water resistant. The Spectrum Noir Aqua Tint in Jade Green. And we have these absolutely fabulous Karen Brush Marker Pros in a range of three colours plus the blender. I think that is a substantial box. The supplies are high quality, the supplies are interesting and there is lots of scope there to work towards something for the scroller challenge. So stay tuned over the next week or so if you like to see what to do with the supplies in terms of the prompt. I always do a challenge video that will be up in the next seven days or so. So you can keep your eyes peeled for that. Well, that ladies and gentlemen is your scroller box for February. I hope you've enjoyed coming along for the ride to see what's in the box and we shall see you soon for another video here in the cave. Bye for now everyone. If you've had as much fun as I have today, you can check out some more scroller A scroller eh? videos here on the right hand side and if you want to see future ones you can smash the subscribe button and join the Colour Cave community where you will see a scroller unboxing every single month.